hello guys uh, welcome back to my channel mess on african motives are uh, still working on the question paper which was uh, actually written in july 2019 for mathematics entry so we shall just have a continuation and see what we're being asked in this case and um, what actually you're supposed to to do uh, so the question that we are given there on question number three which is actually a continuation is uh, if we are given these two uh, brackets equal to zero like this determine x if y is equal to minus two y is equal to minus three we want to find the value of x all right so let's see what we are going to have for the first uh, part there we are, remember this is uh, two brackets that we are given x minus five and y plus 3 like this equal to 0. So the first question we have to find the value of x. We do not know this value of x but we are given that y is equivalent to negative 2. So what are we going to have in this case? All right so it's more of a substitution actually that is taking place here. Just substitute your values uh, in place of y there we substitute minus 2 which is going to be x minus 5 like this into in place of y there we substitute minus 2 so it's going to be minus 2 plus 3 like this and everything equal to, to 0 alright so that means uh, actually we can now simplify this part here minus 2 plus 3 which is a 1 so 1 times this is just going to remain as x minus 5. 1 times any number, remember, does not affect. And equal to 0 there, which means, uh, therefore, our x is going to be minus 5. To the other side, is going to be plus 5. So our x is going to be a 5. So that is uh, actually what's the concept there. Then uh, this time, what about when y is equal to minus 3? So it's the same thing in place of y there, we have to substitute minus 3. So it's going to be x minus 5 into y there, which is minus 3 in place of y there. But we've got plus 3 again, like this, which is equal to 0. All right. So I want us to see what's going to happen here. Minus 3 plus 3, that's a 0 like this. So as we can see, we are left with a zero there and we know that we can't like if we multiply by zero which means x is no longer there also we can't divide by zero because zero divided by zero there is not it's invalid so which means here there's nothing that you can obtain for x so in this case it's actually an in it's going to be like infinite our x is just going to be infinite we do not have anything that is going to uh, appear here or our x is actually not exact so that is what we had on uh, this 3.12 that one it can be simplified further all right then uh, 3.2 we are asked to make v the subject of the formula from the given uh, formula or equation that we have there it's p over q into r squared minus v squared like this equal to d and the question is asking us to make v the subject of the formula so so many ways to kill a cat um so many ways that we can actually do here we can uh, remove this by multiplying uh want to remove p over q so we can just uh, this is 3.2 actually so we can multiply by the inverse of this which is uh, q over p we just interchange the fraction okay you do the same here you multiply by q over p so what you do on the left hand side must be done on the right hand side so this can automatically cancel which means you're going to be left with r squared minus v squared equal to this can multiply was this same as like over one so it's d times q which is dq over 1 times p which is p all right another stage that we have completed but how can we make v to be the subject uh making v let's try and prevent it to be a negative so 
we can make this to be a positive by taking it to the other side of the equation and take this to the other side which means this one is going to be a negative so it will be r squared minus d q like this over p which is equal to now this negative v squared to this side of the equation it will be a positive now so it's going to be positive v squared and how do we remove this square root this square we introduce this square root this one we are supposed to know this consideration whenever you are given a square like this you introduce the square root both sides and by doing so this automatically cancels or remove that square so our v is going to be the square root of the answer this one but we do not know this so it's going to be a plus or minus remember the square root of n number is plus or minus so it's going to be r squared minus d q over p so everything is supposed to be under the the square root is supposed to be covered by this square root like that so as we can see our v is the subject so that's what we just did it there so sometimes they ask simpler questions depends with what you be given then uh, on 3.3 .3, we are given that in a class test one student obtained six marks less than the class average all right so here our reference is not the marks of the student but the class average because his marks are six less than the class average so which means we do not know the class average when his marks are doubled it becomes 40 marks more than again the class average so determine the class average and the student mark all right so this is to be centered from the class average so let the class average let the class average all right this is the class average here be equal to x this is our reference to say we do not know the class average of the students so let it be x then they are saying that in a class test this is a class test okay the student obtained six marks less than less than which means minus x minus six because our class average is x so it's going to be six less so it's x minus six so the student mark student mark is x minus six All right. when his marks are doubled which means we are now talking of another condition not this one his mark here we are saying the class average is x then the student mark is x minus six so now what they are saying this mark this mark was doubled so double you multiply by two so it's two into x minus six that is doubled like this all right so what happened when it is doubled it becomes 40 marks more than the class average so this mark here the doubled mark is equivalent because they are saying it becomes which means it's equal to 40 marks above the average which is 40 marks more than more than which means you add so it's 40 more than the average and our average is x remember our class average is x so it's going to be x plus 40 which is 40 more so this is an equation that can be formulated from the second statement this one we can formulate this equation the first statement just gives us a just an information of what is happening but the second statement is the one that actually gave us this equation so that means we have to solve this equation to solve for x all right so expand brackets and solve two times x which is 2x 2 times minus 6 minus 12 is equal to x plus 40 collect like terms here so it's going to be 2x x to this side is going to be minus x is equal to 40 minus 12 to this side is going to be a plus 12 so 2x minus x is same as 2 minus 1x and 2 minus 1 
it's 1x which is same as x okay then 40 plus 12 which is uh, 52 so our x is going to be 52 and x represents the class average we said let the class average be x so which means the class average the class average is equivalent to 52 okay and the students mark um what will be the student's mark here? The student mark is actually x minus 6, which is 52 minus 6. And uh, 52 minus 6, that's going to be 46, yeah, 46, something like that. So that is going to be the student mark, which is 46 from the information that we give. So you see how you formulate equations and how you solve the equations. Uh, it's just something that you know you must understand from the basics guys uh, of um, the information that you be given something like that and uh, you have to solve and solve for a by completing the squares so for a take note we are solving for a the equation remember the concept of completing the square guys um, whenever you are given uh, to solve applying or using the completing the square method you must remember you're solving for a so you have to make this a to be a positive so you have to transpose to this side so that it can be a squared minus uh, this part yes yes is 2ab but maybe let, let me just write it this way so that we can understand minus 1 is equal to 0 remember you are completing the square for, for actually for a so the part that i want you to understand is just like you are solving for x it means this part here is going to be affecting b so it's best for you to actually present your equation like this it's not like uh, it's different it's just one and the same thing like this it's it will be easier like you see this you're focusing with a okay you're focusing with what with a so that you can clearly see what is affecting a which is this minus 2b of which if you can see it here then there's no need for you to like rearrange like what i'm doing here i'm just doing so that we all understand what is happening so remember the concept of completing the square that uh, you have to find half the coefficient of what of a the coefficient of a which is this minus 2b so you need half of that then you square it so it's half of negative 2b then you square that half so actually half of negative 2b is negative b squared like this all right so how do you solve remember you add this to the both sides of the equal like you're going to have it as a squared minus 2b a like this is 2b a then you add that square that you just determined this one which is minus b squared like this you add it okay which will be equal to you now transpose this one negative one to the other side of the equation is going to be one plus again you square that term remember it's an equation what you do on the left hand side has to be done on the right hand side so you added to the left hand side minus b squared you must also add minus b squared on the right hand side so that's the concept there now after doing this you are going to factorize the left hand side but how do I factorize this left hand side? I'm not going to consider the whole factorization. I'm going to take this term, which is squared, which is a, and this term also, which is squared, which is minus b like this. Everything squared. I have factorized. So you take the first term and the last term, the ones which are being squared, these ones. Then you put them in a bracket you square it by doing so you have already factorized this all right which is equal to now you can simplify here further so this is going to be one plus negative squared is going to be a positive so it will be positive b squared all right 
what am I actually trying to do? I'm actually trying to solve to make a this subject because I'm solving for a, so I have to make a this subject. So it's like make a this subject here, make a this subject. That is to solve. So you're actually making a this subject. All right. So there is a square here, so I have to introduce the square root just like the previous part. Remember to remove the square, introduce the square root, both sides, the square root here, the square root here, and we know that the square root of n number is a plus or minus. So this automatically cancels. A minus B will be equivalent to the plus or minus of this part, which we do not know of 1 plus B squared like this. All right. Remember, what are we solving for? We are solving for A. We are simply need to make A the subject. So we have to transpose minus B to the other side of the equation. It's going to be a plus. It was a minus. So it's going to be a plus. Plus or minus the square root of 1 plus B squared, the one that we can't simplify with this one. We can't obtain the square root. So therefore, this is going to be our A. Our a is going to be b plus or minus the square root of 1 plus b. So that is to solve for a, to solve for a and to make a to be the subject is one and the same thing. So do you see how they can actually ask the same question? This same question they could have asked in this manner. They could have just said make a the subject of the formula or solve for a. So applying the completing the square method that these are the stages that you are supposed to take so uh like i always say it's all about understanding the basics of the topics that you'll be having so here guys we are having a very very big challenge on question four which we are not going to attempt because as you can see i don't know what happened on this thing when i was printing it and look what happened it's not actually clear and i can't see what is happening so we shall move on to the fifth question uh, on our next class. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, our question four being disturbed like that. So we shall move on to the fifth question in our next class. So make sure that you won't miss those classes by subscribing to the channel based on African motives so that you won't miss any class that we shall be having uh, from Mason African motives till we meet again.